Let's see who else is on. Uh, Tim, are you there? Yep. Tim Bray. There we go. Got you, Tim. All right. Anybody else I miss on roll call? Do, 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 do. We have a low count today. Okay. Tell you what, let's go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, apologies. Um, I am in China. My internet is flaky at best sometimes. So that's why Clement is presenting. But if I suddenly drop, it's not because I'm running, it's because I got dropped. Um, first off, uh, because of the 4th of July stuff next week for the states, uh, we decided to cancel next week's call. So just a reminder, um, next call will be in two weeks. And let's see, next up, community time. Is there anything from the community people would like to bring up? All right, moving forward. Um, we did not have an SDK call last week, unfortunately. Uh, we didn't have enough people for a quorum. So I believe the next call is scheduled for, well, it would be next week, um, but with the 4th of July stuff going on. I'll send out an invite to have one the week after, if you guys are okay with that. Um, Clemens and Scott in particular, and I guess Mark, are you guys okay with meeting the week after next, after the regular cloud event call? Uh, yes, and that would have, and that's the, the last chance before my vacation. And so we should, we should definitely meet because there's stuff to resolve. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Because there's Marcus a, I have a, I have a PR for um, guide, SDK guidelines that we need to discuss. Yes. And, and we can't, we can't have that on this call, uh, but we have to talk through it because there's, uh, there's contentious stuff and we need to talk through the contentious stuff. Yeah. I, I'm actually on the PTO that day, so I won't be making the calls, but please feel free to uh, meet without me. Okay, uh, Scott, you can make it, right? Uh, yep, I'll be there. Okay, okay, cool. So I'm out next week, so it's better for me. Yeah, okay, cool. I'll make sure there's an invite for that week, or for the two weeks, cool. All right, um, obviously this week I'm in China because of KubeCon China. I did present the cloud event stuff, the working, uh, the service working group stuff. Um, nothing eventful happened that seemed to go really, really well. Um, the cloud events one was more attended than the serverless one, even though they're both fairly well attended. Uh, as I've said in the notes here, nothing really unexpected happened. Um, the serverless one, I did try to make it into a little bit of a bird of, birds of a feather session to get some feedback from the audience on why they're using serverless or why they aren't using serverless and stuff like that. Um, the audience here isn't the most eager to speak, so it was a little bit challenging, but I did get some information out of them. And for the most part, it was consistent with what we heard at Barcelona in terms of why they're not using it yet. Uh, uh, just aren't that far along in their progression in terms of using the technology. Uh, some people didn't think it was mature enough yet relative to tooling and stuff like that. So like I said, very consistent with what we heard in Barcelona, nothing, uh, nothing new there. Um, I did have a sort of an interview with a analyst from Double Horn Research. He wanted to find out about cloud events. Um, it was, the best thing about that was he, was, he seemed genuinely excited by it because of its simplicity and its usefulness at the same time. He loved the fact that it was such a, a simple idea, yet was, it seemed to be something that really, really fit a need in the industry. And I thought that was a really, really nice sign that maybe we were doing things right, right? Keeping it simple, but filling a, uh, or scratching a real itch that's out there. So that made me feel really good. And he seemed to really like that. So good job, everybody. Um, uh, I, oh, after the uh, serverless working group meeting or presentation, um, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but there was a, a guy here from China who approached me and said he wants to participate in the calls, but the time just is not AP friendly. And obviously, you know, midnight is not great. Um, I asked him to send a note to the mailing list so we can get a conversation going about looking for another possible time, whether it's on a regular basis. I mean, I'm sorry, whether it's a permanent switch or just periodically we do an AP time or not, we'll figure that out. But just a heads up that we may be looking for an AP friendly time, if nothing else, at least occasionally, because he did indicate that, that, there, that there are quite a few companies over here in Asia that he could probably pull into the discussion and they really want to give their feedback on uh, both cloud events as well as what we do next in the service working group. So keep an eye out for that. And, uh, right. So Doug, th does that tie into some of the questions around voting and governance of having to be here? He didn't bring that up as an issue. So I'm not sure that was an issue. I think it was more, he just genuinely wanted to get involved and participate. Um, I didn't get a sense it was due to the voting and everything like that. Okay. 
Thanks. Yep. Yep. Um, let's see. Okay, incubator proposal. So, uh, I believe on last week's call, we agreed to go forward to try to get incubator status in CNCF. Um, there is an initial proposal PowerPoint. Uh, the link is in the meeting minutes. Please take a look when you get a chance. Hopefully, nothing in there is is controversial. Um, just a reminder, though, that we do need at least three end users listed. I believe I have stuff from Codit already in there. Um, but if you have you have customers of your product that are using Cloud Events and they are comfortable with their name being listed, please ping me offline. Uh, while we while the uh, requirements document or criteria does not say that they have to say why they're using our product or how if they're comfortable sharing their use case or why they why they find it interesting I think that'd be great information to add to the slide deck um, but it's not a requirement I just think it'd be useful uh, additionally well it's not a requirement for for uh, graduation to the next level it would be great if we could list all the companies that are choosing to implement cloud events I already have a whole bunch listed on there for the ones that I know about and have publicly stated that they're using it um, but if your company is not listed and you want to be listed, or if your company is listed, but we don't list the product name, which would be useful as well, please let me know. I do have some of the obvious ones in there. Um, anyway, take a look at that. Um, uh, I'd like to see if possibly within the next, within, uh, by the time we have the next phone call in two weeks, whether we could approve that or not. If we can, then I'll ping Chris Anacek to get on the schedule for the TOC. So hopefully you guys can review that within two weeks and get the list of three end users. Okay. Doug, do, Doug yeah. do we need to um, have any, like a beginning slide that says, here's what cloud events is, or at the end, look at here's next steps, futures in this um, deck, or is it strictly about uh, the graduation criteria? I was assuming it's strictly about the graduation criteria, but let me ask Chris. And the reason I probably think we're okay with where we are is do because. Do I need to show this? No, you don't have to. Okay. Um, I pasted um, a link in, in chat if people need to look at it. Yeah, we don't, we don't have to go through the slides right now. That's not the best use of our time here. Um, the reason I think we're probably okay, Mark, is because I believe within the last month or month and a half at the most, we already did a presentation on the status and what is cloud events uh, to the TOC. So they should already be well versed on that. But I'll ask Chris Anacek just to make sure. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, another question here, Doug, regarding the, the adoption list uh, or companies adopting uh, cloud events, I, I see we're kind of listing K native there, and that would include four or five different companies, right? True, but I need to, I need to get verification from them that they're okay listing their names on there. Okay. Yeah. So to that point, I mean, happy to include Red Hat there as well, even outside That's of K native, by the way. Yeah. Okay, so in and outside of K Native, right? Yeah, as well. Yeah, we're using okay. through K Native, but then also outside of K Native, sort of our messaging efforts too. Excellent. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so pick me offline if you want um, any of that information added from your company. Thank you guys very much. Anything else about the incubator status? All right. Um, next up is the PR discussion stuff. Okay, so um, we did agree to the Kafka transport binding. Unfortunately, I needed just one more LGTM before I actually merged it. Is there anybody, actually, I guess I don't need to ask for that. Is there any disagreement with merging given the current state? Because last time we approved it conditionally upon fixing the rebase issues. Um, now that's out there, hopefully people had a chance to quickly look at it. Is there any disagreement now with merging it? I would likely say just go ahead and merge it. And if there's changes that that can be done in additional PRs. Yeah, I was assuming no one was going to speak up to be honest. I just wanted to run through the process quickly. Yep. <laughs> All right. I will merge that after the call. Thank you guys. Next up, um, this issue, I just wanted to get it out. Just bring it up very quickly to get out of the way. Someone was requesting, or this issue, you guys can't see my screen, can you? The next one is the, Request for transport. You guys come in and you show on that one? Yeah. Okay. This one, uh, they were, this person was requesting um, that we include a binding for RFC 8030, but Clemens basically said that there isn't much of a difference between this and HTTP already. And so since we already have that covered, we really don't need this. The person never wrote back to disagree. So I'm going to advocate or propose that we close this one with no action. Mm -hmm. Is there any 
Yep. Is there any questions or comments on that? Okay. Any objection to closing? All right. Cool. Thank you guys very much. Got that one out of the way. All right. Next, modify the roadmap. Um, this one was mine. I think last time there was some wording changes on the after 1.0 section that we want to change. So I think Clemens, if you show that and just scroll down to the bottom, I believe the waste section I changed was the post 1.0 stuff. Now go to the uh, file changes section. Oh, you want to see the, yes. Yeah. So I'll give you guys a second just to read the post 1.0 stuff, make sure you're okay with that. Basically, I had a firm release date of one point or re release target out there at 1.1, but that was premature. Uh, we don't know what we're doing. We may not, we might, may not do actually do anything. Okay. Anybody have any questions or comments on that? Okay. Is there any objection to adopting this PR then? All right, done. Thank you guys. All right, next up, um, Doug, I want to make sure <clears throat> I was interpreting your comments, excuse me, on the uh, allow for broader schema URL. You are advocating that we close that PR, correct? Doug, you there? I see you came off mute, but you may be double muted. Yep, I was double. Yeah, that's fine. We can reopen it when it becomes an obvious issue. Okay. All right, cool. I just want to double check. Thank you. I will close that one. All right, okay. next, fix some typos and grammatical errors. Um, actually, we can skip that. Scott already approved that one. It's just typos and stuff. I'll give you guys to the end of the call if you've seen anything in there that you've Think objectionably, and I think it's pretty obvious. Um, I won't merge it, or we could bring it up, but otherwise, I'm going to merge that one after the call. It seems straightforward, so we don't need to waste time on that. Let's jump to one that's much more exciting: <laughs> added data payload. <laughs> um, I don't believe James is on the call. No, he's not. So, Clemens, I know you've had some time to look at this one. I was wondering if maybe you could talk to what he's trying to do here, and then lead the discussion on whether you think it's a good or bad idea. Yeah, so this this was a fairly broad change, and now the changes are less. So the so effectively, what James says is data should not have any type, um, and so we have so we have already identified that data is different from context attributes, um, and um, James was initially objecting to data being at, called attribute altogether and then went on a giant edit of everything to um, uh, change it to attribute to payload everywhere. Um, then apparently he reconsidered and he's leaving that as attributes, but it's effectively, he's changing the, and this is where all the deletions are. Effectively, he's saying that it has no specified type, um, but it needs to be encodable as binary. Um, and um, then, then basically, and then has basically most of the the rules stay in, in place, but he's effectively removing the the type system constraints or the type system from the data attribute, if you like. That's mostly what this is about. My that's my understanding. Okay. So you, so you no longer have to think about you no longer have to think about things like strings and maps and arrays and any of those things that we have as in the abstract type system. The abstract type system would further only apply to uh, the the attributes, uh, the context attributes, but data would be exempt. So when I looked at this, I don't see if his hands up, so I'll jump in. When I looked at this, the 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 high level direction of trying not to assign a particular type to data um, made some sense to me. The part that I honestly got a little lost on in the text was the entire discussion about making sure that it can be encoded as binary under certain conditions and not other conditions, stuff like that. And I think I just need to go back and reread it more carefully to, to fully get it in my head. But I was wondering what your opinion of, of all that 
stuff was, Clemens. Do you think that that makes sense, or is there something funky there? Um, so, well, the I'm not sure. I'm not sure this changes a lot. Uh, changes a lot. So we have we have special rules here already um, around um, JSON specifically. Uh, because and this is in the so this is in the JSON encoding. So this is in the JSON format here, and in the JSON format, can you see the email notifications that pop up, or did I share the browser window? No, I, you're okay. We don't we don't see that. Okay, great. It's 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 those things weren't secret. Um, um, <laughs> so um, the so in the JSON in the JSON specific in the JSON format, there is a rule around how to encode da data, and that is then special, like if it's JSON content, then it's rendered as JSON inline. So there's a special treatment here for data that's at the encoding level. That none of that, so this is what this entire discussion here is about, and that doesn't change. Um, in the core spec here, this is the really what, change, what changes. It's the type goes from any to unspecified, and must be encodable as, encodable as binary. And then here, and that's what's missing, and that's a that's a, um, a comment that I made on the spec on on this on the PR, is it basically makes a rule around you know the binary encoding, which we already have elsewhere because we're already defining this the the this entire rule in the data um, content encoding attribute. So we're there. We're already saying it's binary, and then it's base sixty four encoded, and then we have this JSON. This JSON discussion is in the JSON um, um, uh, encoding. So I'm not sure what this what this PR changes, um, except except moving words around, and and saying you know I think the most substantial change in the entire PR is this. And I'm not sure what that buys us. Okay. Uh, so Tim's hand is up. Tim, you want to go next? Yeah, I'm, I'm also baffled. What problem is this trying to solve? I, I, didn't, I just don't get it. Yeah, see, that's what I'm also baffled about. Like, so there's a long and drawn out argument that's being made in, in, this, in this here, uh, in, in this PR discussion. And then there's an issue, which is like, why, which is arguing why the attribute type system cannot apply to the data uh, element because the data element is not like the others. But I'm not sure it solves this PR solves anything at the anything real at the interop at the interop front, right? We can we could just we could just as well say, well, it needs binary, but then the special thing that the special handling that we do for JSON where we can go and, and take data, JSON, the data that's inlined, well, that would no longer work because we then need to have, we need binary and we need to have map already um, as a base type because that's how, that's how we do this. So it's, I don't know what this solves. I've just been defending it because Doug told me to, uh, Doug told me to. <laughs> <laughs> so that, thank you for blaming me. I appreciate that. So um, I, I, I Okay, I thought there was a particular uh, scenario in which James was saying that things might break down where a receiver may not necessarily know how to decode the data type and this was a way, or the data attribute, and this may be a way to, to resolve that. Yeah, but I don't think that's true because we already, we already added the data content encoding which says, which effectively indicates that this is a binary and it's base 64 encoded, and that's the, the case where, like, if you can't tell what this is, because it's not a string, or it's not something that you can go and interpret as a string, uh, or you know, decode from a string, where we have this, our string, you know, we have the canonical format for all of our, for all of our data types. Um, so you can go and take a look at this, you could even infer the type from it if it's a string. And in the case where it is inlined, and it is a binary, um, then we have the data content encoding indicator that will then tell you, hey, this is base 64, so you can, so you know. So I don't think, I don't think there's really any case where 
there is a doubt and there's no case that I can see where there is a doubt that where this PR would go and change it. So can you go back to the, um, to the comments, the, the, the comments section on this PR? Yes. And look at the very, and then click on the link to the 261, the very, very first comment. I want to go back to the issue that he claims this is trying to address and see whether you guys agree or disagree with his premise. Yeah, I don't saw that. I don't see how that's related to that. Well, is he, let's start off with the first question. There is he correct that this is not a map, or that's not valid for data? Is is well, you can't see that. You can look at this in isolation, right? If you if you have the cont if the content type indicates that it's JSON then you read it as JSON. You don't read it as a cloud event anything. If the content type says this is JSON, which means application slash JSON or text slash JSON or whatever plus JSON, then, and then you go and take a look at the data field and then you interpret everything that's in there as JSON. That's what the JSON format says. So, that's, so this is legitimate. This is fine, right? If it's not indicating JSON, well, then it's a map, and then that's false. Then that's that's incorrect because we haven't defined a we defined a boolean type. Okay, so it, someone... it, is it a string that is then interpreted as JSON, or is it a binary that's interpreted as JSON? In that, so if it's if it doesn't have if it doesn't have quotes, it's it's uh, a. Um, and if it's inlined, then it's a map. I mean, if so it's this a data content type JSON or application JSON or something plus JSON, then this has to be right. And, and, and yes, and then that, that is right. And so otherwise, an and, and, and so, so if, if this is exactly, so if the, if the content type is JSON, then this is being interpreted as JSON. If it's not JSON, but this is a map, and this can only, so this exact text can only occur if we are looking at a JSON, um, at a JSON encoded document, right? And it's only, and this only occurs in, in, in structured encoding. So we have a structured encoding, JSON encoded uh, element. And then this represents, if the, if the data type, if the content type is not JSON, then this is not valid because this is not a map because the true, it, well, it's a map, but the value is, the value is not supported. So you guys are now claiming that his statement about after the first chunk of text there, after the first example where it says, it's not a map, why? Because true is not a valid object according to cloud event spec. A valid object must be a map string or binary and cloud event spec says that maps are valid mappings of strings to objects. Now, what I'm wondering is whether that is an incorrect statement because we've recently changed the spec to say maps can have, uh, uh, can, maps can include any types as the data for a particular key. So is this statement that he makes in there where the paragraph starts, it's not a map, is that an incorrect paragraph? No, it's not. So it's, this, this, it's not a map in per hour encoding, but we have a, but what you're looking at depends on, really depends on the content type. Yeah, the, the correctness of the statement depends on the value of data content type. Correct. If, in general, the statement is incorrect. If he says, uh, and, and he has to, it, it can only be correct, you can only think about it once he's told you what the data content type is. Right. right. So this is valid. Uh, so this is perfectly valid, Jason, and he needs to interpret it as a JSON object, basically. That's right. uh, I would like to point out that this is an old comment before data content type even existed. I think so. Uh, we had content type for a long time. We didn't oh, have data true. content encoding for a long time. Oh, that's true. This was open July. S oh yeah, it's really old. 
they are. Yeah. Yeah, but um, it's not. It's this the content type was uh, was one of the earliest things that we had. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Let me put it this way: Is there anybody on the call who who understands? either understands or agrees that there is an issue in the spec that, or understands what James is trying to get to, because I, well, I think what needs, based on what I'm hearing, I think we need to go back and have a conversation with James about really what the issue is and whether that issue actually exists before we go make, make change to the spec. Because I'm not so, sure I'm getting the sense that everybody understands what James is worried about. So um, this is close. <laughs> it's close. Um, I just, well, when he brought this up, I just wanted, if we really need to be able to apply this type system we have for the attributes to data at all. So uh, because of this, I, I kind of agreed to his uh, proposal to uh, remove this type any from data. I mean, you could even use the type system, our type system for um, um, designing your actual messages uh, the, the event payload. And I, I don't think that's uh, our intention. Yeah, that's actually a part of the PR that actually did resonate with me was the notion of just saying, it's not of any particular type, it's just data per the encoding that you specify through data content type and data content encoding. Exactly, but, yes. Yeah, but it's, it's the rest of the PR that kind of lost me. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, I, I was only following in the beginning when he was trying to uh, remove this notion of data as an attribute as all, uh, at all. So um, I, I think it would also make sense, but it's, uh, it's, it would be a big change, so. Okay. So for, for you guys that, that seem to really understand what, what was going on here and why it's problematic, is there anything that you see in this PR that we should look at and say, yeah, at least this part makes sense, or do you think the whole PR doesn't quite, isn't quite appropriate? Someone's near the Notre Dame. Oh, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> sorry, that's, that's. <laughs> that's okay, just, thought it sounded cool. Um, okay, so is there a, hmm. well, I definitely don't want to close the pair without him being able to, to, to talk to it. Um, is there anybody who advocates for this PR in any way? I advocate for the data payload not being any type and not constructing data payloads out of our type system. Okay. So Clemens or, or Tim, since you guys were speaking about this, what do you think about that aspect of it? Is there some, is there some sort of, sort of, I'm sorry, is there some sort of change in that space that might make sense to make? Uh, I'm sorry about the, the bells in the background. Um, I, I'm, I think it's okay. To, I think it would be okay to say, um, you know, I have no strong objection. Let's put it this way. I have no strong objection to say that the type system doesn't apply to data and that data needs to be, uh, you know, binary or string or special, but then you, you're quickly back to the normal type system because ultimately what the type system is, is strings or binary. Well, do we actually have to say what it is? Can't, can't we just say something along the lines of data is in whatever format you specified for the data content type, data to content encoding, or if those aren't there, then it must match with the rest of the payload, which in most cases is probably JSON. And it's up to you to make sure that it aligns with it. And we don't necessarily have to say what type it is or, to, or and what I suggesting not making any sense. It, it for, for me, for me, having some constraints on it makes more sense than than re removing constraints, and that's that's what that would be. So as as long as you have some level of constraint, and we have so we have the type system right now, which puts some constraints on some formatting. You know, we talk about strings, we talk about binaries, and we talk effectively about particular formats of strings that map to data types. 
which is per se not terrible. And we say for data, data can be any of those, primarily binaries and, and strings, probably. Um, but all can also be maps. So if you have structured data, you can go and express that if you stay within the, the, uh, the limits of, um, of uh, the type system that we have that doesn't hurt. Um, th that's, that's a set of constraints. And we have made some special provisions for JSON so that, J that JSON in its entirety can be represented. And uh, I think we have, I'm not sure we, no, we don't have the same thing for even for MQP. Um, but we might do, we might do something similar. If someone comes up with a, with a, a CBOR format, um, then that might have similar, a similar provision, which allows the full CBOR uh, um, type system or if someone comes on, comes around with message packet, would have a similar provision. Um, but we have some constraints around it. I'm worried about, you know, removing your constraints can say data can be anything because then the implementation can also be anything. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm worried about saying this is, this can be anything. I, I'm, I apologize. I, I feel like I'm missing something. Can you elaborate a little bit on why it's bad to say it can be anything as long as it is encoded according to the data content type and data content type encoding? Um, because then it's effectively, then you have to treat it as opaque and binary at all times. Um, but what if the content type is JSON? Why would you treat it as binary then? Right. I mean, it seems to me that data can be pretty much anything because it's whatever business logic you have. Yes. And so as long as you can encode it per what you say it is, you know, JSON, you know, UTF or whatever, um, as long as it adheres to that and adheres to the format of the overall envelope mm -hmm. structure, then why do we care what type it actually is? Since it, since to us at yeah. the spec level, it really is opaque, right? It's true. Well, the only change we would make then though is really to, um, to leave the data type open. Right. So, so of this entire, of this entire change, um, and that's the previous one, right? Yeah. Um, of this entire change, the only thing we would do is to say unspecified or even delete that line. Yeah, I think we'd have to say something like it's unspecified, but its serialization has to align with, you know, the, the content type or the encoding type, the content type, all the other things that are specified that tell us how to decode it. Yeah, or if those aren't present, align with the rest of the envelope. Yeah, it's it's event format specific, or it's, a, it's actually events format specific. Yeah. Is, so, Jim, your hands up. Yeah, I was just the, the more I looked at that original issue, and that's what I've been trying to type in the chat. Um, both of those examples that the guy put in the original issue, I believe, are valid. Could you go back to the issue? Uh, uh, yes, I can, I think. So, 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 so what I'm, yeah. So what, what I'm, I, I think I understand where this guy's coming from. Cause I mean, if you look at, for example, the proto buff spec, um, it, it defines a cloud event as just a, a map of uh, either strings, bytes, ints, or maps. Yeah. Um, so I, it, What's going on here in this example is that you, we're right in that looking at this in isolation doesn't make any sense. But if this is a structured cloud event plus JSON content type, both of these are valid. Yeah, the first one just resolves to JSON explicitly. The second one, we would expect there to be a data content type attribute present as well, which also said JSON. Yeah, um, but it wouldn't. 
I wouldn't expect an SDK to naturally demarshal it into a JSON value. Yeah, that would then become an application concern. So they're both they're both valid forms. Uh, in, in the back of my head, I can see what this guy's getting at, um, but I, I I don't know if it's a worthwhile argument. So, Jim, I want to make sure I understand. When you say the second one, you're talking about the one that says data colon, and then the entire yeah. thing is put in quotes, right? That's still valid. Well, I agree yes. it's valid, but 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 isn't the value of data in this particular case a string? It yes. is, but but it would have a data content type of application slash JSON. Yeah, you can't say it's valid without telling us what the data content type is. Yes, exactly. Right. Well, and I, well, and I think when this issue was raised, um, data content type wasn't even defined. We didn't have that. Yeah. Right, but I, I just want to make sure I understand because if data content type on this second example here is application JSON, yep. I don't believe this is valid. No, Why? it's not. Why? Right. It is valid, but it's a string. It, it is. Yeah. It's, a, it's valid, but it's weird. Yeah. No, no, well, it's no, it's not valid. Why is, no, it, why, no, no, why it is you, valid. Certainly, is valid, but it's a string. Correct. Yes, if you string. encode it as JSON, if you decode that, it's still a string. It doesn't change into an object. It's just a JSON string. Yeah, That's so right. The content type is the structured cloud event JSON. Yeah, in the HTTP header, and the data content type attribute would say application json yes and if it does say that is then that, the, the second the second is valid but it's a string yes it's not an object yes yeah. okay great yeah okay I, 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 okay a, to, to be to be pedantic it's a valid json text as that term is defined in the rfc yeah. correct yes <laughs> <laughs> so we're okay. vehemently agreeing with one another and i don't think it's totally it's, it's <laughs> not okay. an issue Okay, so it sounds to me that, that this, okay, this has been very useful, I don't know about for you guys, but at least for me. And I, I feel like maybe we're coming up with a possible solution um, or alternative solution. Clemens, would you be willing to do two things for me aside from sharing your screen? Um, but I know it's a huge ask, thank you. Um, one, comment back to him on why his, his original premise may not be correct given all the new attributes we have. Yes. And, and two, propose some changes to the definition of the data attribute to talk about everything or to, to, to do everything we just talked about. Basically saying it could be any type as long as it's encoded properly per the other attributes, blah, blah, blah. Yes. You'd be willing to do that? Yes. Cool. You're, on, make, you're, on, the, you're it, on the recording. Can you make a, can you make a note though? I in, will do that. In, in the notes. Just okay. for me to... Um, oops. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, cool. I feel like I made some progress there. Hopefully, James likes is okay with the direction we're going to go, but we'll see. Next up is Evans. Or, yeah, Evans. Uh, I don't believe Evans is on the call, unfortunately, so we're going to be guessing here. Actually, Scott, you might be able to talk to this one. Um, Scott, do you understand um, Evans' concern? I do. Oh, okay. Go for it, Clemens. Uh, yeah, go ahead. But Scott, go ahead if you want to. Uh, basically, like uh, the explosion of maps inside of binary. Uh, Binary HTTP mode, it doesn't make a lot of sense in most cases. Yes. So we have, yeah, so we have a concrete problem in AMQP, which I can't get over um, because we have a, a but this, the same is true for HTTP. Effectively, HTTP only allows strings as um, content. Um, and AMQP only allows, uh, allows multiple types, but they can only be simple types, uh, which means no complex types, no maps, no uh, arrays uh, in application properties, which is a similar thing. So we now still allow, uh, in our context attributes, um, we still allow maps, and that creates a mapping problem. For, for um, HTTP, 
since everything is text and we have this slight bias towards JSON, it seems relatively straightforward to go and encode that as JSON and then stick that into an HTTP header. In MQP, that starts to get super ugly because I can't put application properties, I can't put a map into the application properties. And the only workaround, and we've discussed this amongst the MQP folks, um, the only real workaround we can think of is to, um, since we can't amend the spec that that ship has sailed, um, would be to stick that stick JSON into that into the 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 attribute, and that then becomes really weird because we have our own type system, and all of a sudden you have to use a different type system, and that's all super ugly. So. Um, I'm in. I'm actually in favor of this. The 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 other reason why um, having complex types and context attributes, so maps, is difficult is that most of the things he wanted, some of the things, most of the things he wanted to do with these context attributes is that you want to go and drive met, uh, infrastructure through them. So you want to go into filters and and etc. And um, filter languages such as what you use in JMS with SQL or you know, any kinds of, of other you know, prefix, suffix expressions you want to go and run um, on entities, they don't compose well with, com with complex types. Um, for instance, if you, use, if you wanted to go and, and map a cloud event to um, AMQP and then run that through an AMQP broker, and then use whatever JMS expression or some of the our new um, filter expression that's be, that we've defined for AMQP. Uh, you can't get into. You wouldn't be able to get into these um, um, into this complex uh, properties. You can't navigate through them, which means you can't really do anything with them. So it's it is better if you have an extension, and that extension needs to define four, five, six, seven different things, those should be four, five, six, seven different attributes rather than one attribute with, you know, multiple things inside of it. So Clemens, can, can you show his changes and, and talk to it? Because I got to be honest with you, I, I got lost on why he's making a change uh, and why it's the right thing so, to do. So I'm, so I'm, I'm, I agree with the spirit of this. <laughs> Okay. Um, I haven't uh, the the any and any context that, the distinction um, that I'm not bought into, and I have so this is not something I think we can go and 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 uh, approve now, um, because I haven't really understood that yet. Okay, because because to be honest, when I first read his 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 issue and that PR and stuff. I kind of got the impression of, oh, he's going to try to get rid of maps, but he didn't. He, he, he kept maps and created a brand new type called any context and it got completely lost as to how that solved the problem. Yeah, this, this needs, this needs work. And I haven't, haven't, haven't spent the time of, uh, because it's relatively new, I think. Um, it's three days old or something like that. Three days old. Yeah, I haven't haven't looked at the details of this yet, but I agree. So this comes from since this comes from the discussion that we had about those attributes. I'm sympathetic with the change, but I I'm probably not the details uh, need work. Okay, uh, Tapini, your hands up. Um, if we want not to use the map type for context attributes, which is starting to sound quite sane, unlike I thought at first. Um, can't we just remove it all together? What would we use it afterwards for? Yeah, that's that's right. I think there's much of a um, I think there's much of a reason to keep it then. So so I mean, that, can... that also solves problems with the data. It can't be it can still be any type afterwards because it can't be a map. And it Correct. Not so much. That makes matters that that simplifies matters. So if we just throw out map, then um, uh, that would indeed help. So I, I apologize. I, I, I'm confused. If we okay. throw out if we <laughs> if we throw out map, yes. how does someone define, say, an extension that is basically a, a structure? You can't, because the extension is an attribute, and the attribute can't can't have the map as a type, because the extension 
you know, is just metadata, and the metadata needs to be it needs to be evaluated by um, uh, by infrastructure. And if the infrastructure most commonly doesn't know how to deal with complex types, which is how things are, um, then that extension probably won't help you. So the extension should, instead of defining one structure, it should define two, three, four fields. Like what we do with trace parent, trace context in, right. um, in, uh, for the tracing, right? That's, that is conceptually, that's one structure, but it's been separated out into headers. And that's what happens throughout the entire, like the W3C trace context specs defines those two fields and they always go together. Okay. So, and so, so I, I personally, I'm okay with that, with that direction. Cause I do think it makes life easier. Um, the reason I'm bringing it up though, is because and I don't want to open up sore wounds, but when we had the entire discussion around extensions, one of the things we talked about was, Oh, if someone wants to have a complex extension, basically a structure, that's okay. Right. Go ahead and create a, a bag in essence. Remember that discussion and yes, inside yes, that bag, yes. you can put everything you want. And, and at, the, at that point in time, we did say, well, it's up to you. You can have a choice. You can either create a bag or a structure, or you could put all the things in the bag as top level attributes and you can prefix them with the word foo, right? Everybody starts with foo. They all then yes. uh, semantically are in a bag. It's just, it just doesn't look like a bag. Um, and everybody was okay with that. And now what we're basically saying is, nope, sorry, we're gonna get rid of the option of doing bags. And if you want to conceptually group things together, do a fancy trick like having all your extensions start with the same key pre the same prefix, right? Yeah, but we started with a world where we had two bags and we needed to have a way to express bags. Then we effect effectively banished the bags completely out of the core spec and relegated the bags to the extensions. Right. And I think what we're saying now is, well, you know, we already banished them here, so let's banish them everywhere. <laughs> and if you haven't, <laughs> and, yeah, and I, I, think, I don't hate that. I just want to make sure that everybody understands the ramifications here. And and the opposition against that, like since since we've now evolved some and we've started started to implement, I think the 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 there were theoretical except, uh, objections against it. Um, and now that we've written some code, um, and see that stuff works, even though we don't have bags. Um, I think it's okay to go and take that new that step now and to go get rid of them altogether. Okay, so Jim, I'm gonna pick on you. Oh good, your hand's going up. Um, but one, one question or one statement. Technically someone could still support bags. It's just they would have to do something like encode it as a string. And from our perspective, it looks like a string but they can still decode it as a, as a structured map or whatever they want, correct? Sure, why not? Right, just want to make sure. Okay, so Jem, you're first, and then I'll hit Tapini. Yeah, I mean, I understand the driver for this. Um, if there was any way we could keep this sort of bag concept for extensions, I think it's quite powerful, um, even if we limit it a bit more. Yeah, because I think that may have been Evan's original concern that, you know, uh, the way it was originally defined, I could create an extension which had you know, numerous deep nested um, maps. Uh, if we would sort of come up with a more limited definition of an extension so that we could still create a, a map, but maybe just a map of strings or, or, or something so that we can create some level of encapsulation. Um, that, that would be my, you know, my wish. Okay. Tapini, you're, you're up next. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> originally I was also going to note that the bag idea is going to be thrown out the window with this one, but uh, I, I think that there's there's a lot of different workarounds to having maps. It not just prefixes or just two fields, also like four one and four type situations where you just do common delimital lists. There's, there's a bunch of workarounds. They are, none of them are as pretty as maps or as proud, powerful, and that's what bugs me, uh, and I think that's what Jem was talking about. But on the other hand, trying to create something that's not maps but solves the same problems feels like that's going to be an infinite rabbit hole that we never get out of. 
and it doesn't really serve the interoperability that much because it's something new we define. Yeah. My main my main concern is that the the uh, they cause trouble in mapping into transports, and that is you know in HTTP you you have to put them into a string. In in MQP we have no choice but putting them also effectively into a string, um, or uh, the MQP the MQP transport would even have to go and do its own encoding trick. Um, that will then have to. Um, you know, preserve the map in some way. And if we just say, you know what, if you want to have co a structured content uh, and you write an extension, well, define in that extension how you want to have that structured content serialized. And if that's and if that's a JSON, if that's a JSON string, a string containing JSON, well, that's fine. Okay, so we're running a little low on time here. Um, I don't think we're necessarily come to a conclusion here. What I'd like to do is continue the discussion in the PR itself, but it sounds to me like we have three or a couple different options. One is keep things as they are. Another is go the way of Evan's pull request. Another option is to keep maps, but only make them one level deep. Uh, another option is remove maps entirely. Is that correct? Are there other options I'm not yep. thinking of? Okay. Okay. So. What I'd, what I'd like to, to ask is everybody, please think about this. I'll, I'll, I'll add a comment to the PR, talking about our discussion here a little as best I can summarize it. Um, and then please put your comments in the PR itself and not just on Evan's uh, exact change, but also on the direction you'd like to go or why you might have concerns with some of the other proposals or other options available. Um, because we, I think this is this is kind of a big one, and it feels a little bit like we're reopening the extensions discussion slightly, which is actually is not unexpected. Because we did say we might revisit some things based upon actual real world experience, which is exactly what this is. So from that perspective, it's good, but uh, it's bad in the sense that this could rat hole us if we want to wrap this thing up quickly. <laughs> so, so please don't be shy. Put your comments out there. Okay. Um, we don't have time to say dive into anything too deep. Yet. Uh, so is there any other comments or questions we want to make on this one? Because we do have another couple of minutes and really want to continue. Can, can we also allow extensions to specify encodings so nice. per transport? Yes, we do. But yeah, so that gives a lot of flexibility to extensions like anyway. One. Yes. Okay, good Oop. point. Okay, uh, Jem, let me pick on you just for a sec. It would be useful if you could make your comments uh, in the PR directly as well when you get when you get a chance, so people understand why. Not not just that you want to use bags, but why you feel like that would be uh, better than just doing a prefix kind of thing and keep everything flat, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. With that, um, is there any other topic people want to bring up that's not having to do with Evans PR, since we have another three minutes. Okay, in that case, Mehmet, are you there? Mehmet? Oh, yes, I am here. Oh, there we go. Okay, gotcha. Anybody else I missed for the uh, attendance list? Okay, um, so since we're not meeting for two weeks, um, even more so than normal, because we are trying to wrap this thing up. Please, please, please look at all the open issues and PRs in particular and comment on them. Um, don't just assume, I, 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 don't, I don't want to just assume that no comment means you're okay with it. Please give an explicit LGTM on there because I need to know how you guys feel about this stuff and that will help move the discussions along. Obviously, if you do have questions or concerns, please bring those out because I don't want this two weeks to go by and, and not have a whole lot of work done. I'd like to see if, can, if we can resolve as many of these things on, on the next call as possible. Cause I know a lot of people are anxious for us to wrap this thing up. All right. And, and a reminder of the, we will have an SDK call uh, in two weeks after the normal uh, cloud event call. Okay. Anything else people want to bring up? Uh, this has been Eric hiding behind the 206 number. Oh, Eric, Eric thank you. Uh -huh. yeah, sorry about that. We were going oh. through the Rockies. And <laughs> sounds good. All right. Thank you. Anybody else that I miss? 
All right, cool. In that case, um, Clemens, thank you very much for sharing your screen. I appreciate it. Sure. Thanks, everybody. Yep, and we'll talk again in two weeks. Everybody uh, in the States, at least, have a good uh, holiday next week. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thanks for the crispy, clean Microsoft quality. <laughs> yeah, you're complimenting him, but then picking, I, indirectly picking on me. I know it. <laughs> All right, bye. Okay, bye, guys. Bye.